Hey YouTube followers, uh, Jed's here, and I'm just doing the uh, 40,000 mile service on my uh, 2018 Triumph Bonneville uh, T120. Uh, just doing a valve adjustment or valve check, and I uh, kind of want to just go over what you'll need. Basically, you need to get that cover off, which is kind of a bear. There's a couple of, you know, your ignition coils, and there's uh, your absolute manifold, absolute pressure sensor, and all that stuff that's kind of snug under here, so you have to put that away. Um, you're going to change the plugs anyway every 20,000 miles, So, but what you got to do is take the spark plugs out so there's no compression in the engine. Uh, this is not what Triumph will say tell you to do. This is just how I do it. I've done it on all my machines. Uh, basically, you know, you need your, your, your shim, you know, your little feeler gauge. Um, basically, I'm doing the .127, which is a little thicker than the minimum requirements. So uh, the, uh, the exhaust shim on this is uh, 0.12 to 0.22 millimeter. Um, and then this guy is uh, 0.13, I believe, to a 0.22. I, I got to look. Let me just, let's just take a look and just be true and fill the internet with real information. All right. So intake 0.05 to 0.13. That's the, that's the, wide as it can go and that's as tight as it can go and exhaust is 0.12 to 0.22 and uh if your valves are a little loose than this it's not it's going to hurt as much if it's tighter than this so um i'm doing the 1.127 millimeter uh shim or i'm sorry uh feeler and basically if all my valves are too tight then this won't fit in and you're gonna to need to uh, uh, get shims for your your valves. Now this bike was uh, had its valves adjusted at 20,000 uh, 20, miles last year, and um, everything was tight on it, so they redid all the valves. So there's new shims in it, and uh, we're just gonna go through it. I've already already done all the the valves on it. Um, if you're in a crunch, the real valves you really want to worry about is your exhaust valves. These are the guys that are gonna burn up. Uh, the intakes don't really affect much, but if they are open, they're going to affect compression and uh, they won't get much blow by, but um, critical, 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 critical is your exhaust. So uh, as you can see, it's a really great design here um, from Triumph. It's a single overhead cam. Uh, you've got each lobe, you've got two exhaust lobes that feed this rocker assembly. This rocker assembly pushes down on your valve, uh, shim over bucket valves uh, assemblies. So these guys, uh, you got four exhaust, four intake, obviously, because we all know this, because we all love our Triumphs. And um, so usually folks will take this cover off and they'll have a t they'll crank um, the, the, the flywheel to kind of to turn it. But uh, the best way to do is, I usually do, is just put it in six gear put my tool here and then I kind of just rotate the wheel until you see that valve see how that valve just released that means there's no pressure from the cam lobe on this rocker assembly now folks are like oh it's gonna be a top end setter blah 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 no 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 it's all about loading the cam on the rocker so if the rocker is being loaded by the cam lobe you can't get a proper adjustment also make sure the engine's cold and so the best way to do this is just I use just spin the wheel and as you can see I just freed up that rocker and then make sure maybe still on the lobe a little bit there we go and you basically put your feeler gauge in between and if it goes in easy and it's easy very loose it's really loose actually it's probably closer to 0.22. Um, you're you've, you're in clearance. If you cannot fit this, if you cannot fit this into here, you're gonna have to take these two eight millimeter bolts out. The rock, and this is the best thing about this bike, is you do not lose timing if you have to change your valve, or your uh, your shims in your valve. So you could take these rockers out. This rocker comes off, and you can replace your shim, and you're not having to fiddle and hold things and have things open and it's just you take it off and then you bolt it back on and you don't lose any timing so it's really imperative to just you know check your valves 
and yep, yeah, nice and loose. So I mean, and that's the thing with this bike, and I'm I want to report too is that if you uh, if you ride a lot like I do, and you've already done your valve first valve adjustment, you're gonna probably need um you're probably gonna need a valve change or a shim change. So, wait, see, look at that. Ooh. Ooh, that got tight. Let's just uh, make sure that's loaded, offloaded. Sometimes it likes to hang around on the edge of the lobe. Yeah, see? Perfect. Nice and loose. Nice and loose. And that's it, man. So, uh, it's super easy. And, you know, uh, <laughs> beautiful thing about shim over bucket bi bikes. So, you usually do the valves once. And then it's just checks for the rest of the life of the bike. Uh, I could tell uh, it's not even close to 0.127. It wasn't even kind of close. It was pretty loose. So even if they get a little tighter, they'll probably still pass next time around. But uh, like I said, it's a pretty, it's kind of a daunting task. It's just because you got to remove so many things to get to your, your, uh, your valve train. But once you're in there, it's really just an easy task of putting everything together and um you know or you know and just taking it apart and spinning the wheel and making sure that your clearances are good but we got a good clearance here bike's got about forty thousand miles i'm coming up to forty thousand it's like thirty nine thousand and change so there you go that's how you do it jed signing off